We're going to start Colossians um, chapter 1. And because I've already spoken a lot, I just want to get, instead of the salutation, which starts in chapter 1, verses 1 to 8, <clears throat> you can read that on your own. That's basically Paul just greeting uh, the church at Colossia. But I want to get down to the point where we're, we're going to be dealing with the idea of the power of God to change our lives. So we're going to read these scriptures, maybe comment a little bit, but then we're going to pray. For, uh, Colossians chapter 1, we'll go to verses 9 through 14. Okay, Doug? 9 through 14. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. And here's the scripture that I wanted to focus on. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed or transformed us into the kingdom of his son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins that is the whole process now paul starts this by saying i'm praying that you would have be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding to know god's will i'm asked many times how can i know the will of god well number one if jesus is your lord and savior say jesus teach me your will He's going to point you to the Word of God. What does the Word of God teach us? It teaches, it gives us instruction. The Word of God gives us the instruction on how to live a Christian life. And I would start always in the New Testament, if you're new in Christianity. Uh, you can read a gospel, then skip over to Acts. That tells about the history of the Acts of the Apostles and the Holy Spirit after Jesus risen from the dead. But if, you, if you're getting stuck on anything in your life, you go to all of the other books, Romans and First and Second Corinthians, all the epistles. They're, they're basically, that's the instruction. It teaches us how to live godly in Christ Jesus. Now, you're not going to be perfect. If you try to be perfect, you're going to get very, very frustrated. But recognize that you're not saved by the works of the law. In other words, you're not saved by how good you are, okay? You're saved by the grace of God through your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross of Calvary. So why is it such a struggle? Well, we're not to the place where we struggle against sin by shedding blood like Jesus did. But the struggle is something that we all have as a Christian because we're trying to deny the natural bodily desires of this body that we have. And you hear me say it all the time, but it's a fact. We have a mammal body where uh, we, it's an animal body. It has animal impulses just like all the other mammals. But God says, you're not to be like them because your intelligence, okay, in your spirit, I've given you a brain that's higher than every other animal on the face of this earth. No matter how smart you think whales are, porpoises are, okay, they cannot rule the world, all right? They're not going to be able to do that. Man is way, way above that. They do speak of the intelligence of God, but nowhere to the place where man was made in the image and likeness of God. Whales weren't, porpoises weren't. Believe me, I love animals. And, but they're not, okay? They're just not there, okay? So therefore, you are made in the image and likeness of God, and he put our spirits in human bodies down here, and they're earth suits. They're only good down here. They can't function any other planet. In fact, when you leave this earth, you leave the body down here, it goes back to dust. But it's the body that gives you all the trouble with all the impulses and desires. It really does. The younger you are, the more you're going to be uh, carried away by various impulses of your human body. And that's where this fruit of the Spirit comes in, this fruit of self-control, to control yourself. And God asks you to control yourself. Whereas the you know, secular world says, ah, you know, that's baloney. Just do whatever you want to do. And uh, you can do whatever you want to do. You have free will. That is the issue. See, God gives you free will. You can either will to do his will or not to do his will. If you will to do his will, it's much harder. 
than just going ahead and do whatever you want to do. You might kill yourself faster through alcohol and drugs and partying, and pick up a, a, a sexual disease, transmitted disease, or kind of crazy stuff, overdoing certain uh, impulses uh, to get satisfaction you know, in your, your brain, uh, in the pleasure center. But without self-control, you'll probably self-destruct. There has to be a control, and the guidance has to be your free will to do his will. And my favorite prayer, and Jim picked up on it, Father, not my will, but yours be done. It's my favorite prayer. In fact, if you pray that prayer a couple of times a day, that kind of like, that just does it all. You give God permission to set up the boundaries for his will to be carried out in your life. Instead of praying for all these absolute things, I want daddy, please give me this, I want a new car, I'd like a Corvette, or I'd like this, I'd like this, that, and the other thing. Okay, that's what children do. But when we get older, we say, Father, you're my Father in heaven. You know it's best for me, but I would like to have this. But Lord, you know, not my will, but yours be done. In every choice you make, whether you're young and you don't have a mate yet, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Because your will, and Jess and I were talking about this yesterday, when we're young, we have a tendency to pick up mates just like all the animals do. They're physically, physical attraction. We're not thinking of, of anything about the future. We're just thinking about, I'm attracted to that person. And uh, you hear these testimonies all the time. Young people, a girl falls in love with a guy and she treats him like trash. Why do you stay with him? Because I love him. <laughs> not, you, love, that's not love, okay? You're, 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 you're chemically bonded to the individual, emotionally and, and physically. That's what you are, it's a chemical thing. And some of them listen, some of us don't. I mean, I wasn't listening. I mean, I'm preaching now, but I can tell you right now, when I was younger in the entertainment world, we were attracted to what people look like. That's what the whole entertainment world is. And how powerful is it? Some of the richest people in the world. Guess what? They're musicians and uh, Hollywood movie stars. You know, very few of them, if you ever have a movie, they're gonna be $10 million, $100 million. They're the wealthiest in the world. It has nothing to do with the color of skin. I got news for you, that's to do with money. That's what it really is all about because some of the richest people in the world are seemingly minorities. Then again, subject for another day. But the point is, if you seek the will of God, you'll find it. In fact, Steve said that. You'll find me if you search for me with all of your heart. That's my search for the rest of my life. But as I said before, I really don't want to know anymore. There can come a time when you want to can know so much about how the world, where the world is at, and what's going on in the world. And yet the more wisdom that you have in seeing what's wrong, you're frustrated because you're realizing that by seeing what you see doesn't mean it can be changing things. And what you really do is see is how blind a lot of individuals really are to their own circumstances and they live in their own little worlds. But I want to know the truth because it sets me free. It sets me free and I can help other individuals get set free too, amen? amen. So let's just zero in a few minutes and then we're gonna just close in prayer. I want to get down to this place here of being Strengthened in verse 11 with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. It's almost like an oxymoron. How can I be strengthened with all his might and all of his power, okay, and yet still be long suffering and joy? Brings me back to this whole point of will. In other words, he places us on the earth, and it's like the simplicity of this is go back to the Garden of Eden. God blesses Adam and Eve. He gives them all the power over the whole earth. He says, there's only one thing I don't want you to do. The tree in the middle of the garden, you're not to take any of the fruit of that one. It's not off to the side. It's in the middle of the garden. Every time Adam and Eve wake up, they got to go around the tree, okay, to go and check out all the works of God. They got to keep going around the tree, and they're not supposed to touch it, okay, or eat of it. They're not supposed to do anything like that. So what's the one thing that they're tempted with? The thing they can't have. That's why you see individuals have so much and yet they destroy their life because there's one thing they can't have and yet they destroy their lives with it. Just read about the, one of the senators from New York. He's gonna spend seven years in jail. He was a multimillionaire. He had a distinguished service life and yet he did some political favors in exchange for monies 
and things like that. He's going to jail. First, his first sentence was 12 years. Then they, they appealed it, and uh, they, he was retried, and they gave him seven years in jail. The man's not a young man. What the heck is going through your head? It's like a police officer. He's on the force for 10 years or 15 years. He's, he's getting up the ladder, and all of a sudden he takes bribes or he's selling drugs on the side. For what? You know? Just spending, you know, why would you do that? And then he ends up going to prison. Do you know what happens to a cop when he goes to prison? Not good. Not good at all. Why would you do something like that? It's a lie of the devil, but why? It goes back to the garden. We always want what we want because of free will. Free will is a tremendous gift of God because God has free will. You're going to determine your destiny by what you do with your own free will. Now, truthfully, without God's help, you can't get off of alcohol. You can't get off of drugs. You can't stop doing what you're doing. You really can't. In Alcoholics Anonymous, they change it to a higher power, but it helps because you've got to look outside yourself. You've got to submit your will to a higher power and say, I can't do this myself. It's the same thing with Christians. I can't walk this walk without the Holy Spirit. But here it says, I can be strengthened with all of his might and his glorious power. If I have to, I'll quote that back to God. Hey, Lord, Paul was praying that I'd be strengthened with all might and according to his glorious power. So I'm claiming that. If you're going to claim anything, claim that. I want the power of God in my life to say no to sin and yes to him. Amen? And then this last scripture in 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the powers, a power of darkness and conveyed. I like to better tra translated us or transformed us into the kingdom of his son, of the son of his love. He delivers us from the power of dark. One kingdom to another kingdom. That's beautiful. So we can now use our free will in the kingdom of God. And I can say no to sin now. Before I, 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 I couldn't do it before. But I still have to deal with temptations. Because when we're frustrated, and some of you get frustrated, and, and I'll admit it. Look, when we get in the flesh, we don't want to please God. Somebody cuts me off the first time, you know, you know I, I let out a blooper here and there still. Okay? So depending on my mood. If I'm in a great mood and I'm in the Holy Ghost, I'll say, you're really foolish. But if I'm in the flesh to begin with and somebody cuts me off, I go back to my old way. Okay? Not the super old way of rolling down the window and, you know, trying to start a fight with the person. But, you know, with the windows closed, I'm screaming and yelling in the car. You know? And then Jess has to listen to me for the next couple of minutes as they say, nobody cares about signs anymore. They don't care about law, you know? After all, 55 miles an hour is 55 miles an hour, and I'm courteous, and I'm doing 62. Okay, I got it. I got it set on at 62 miles an hour, and the guy is flashing his life behind because he wants to do 85. It's like, where the heck is law today? Nobody cares about laws. That's exactly what I say to Jess usually, and she just smiles. She don't say a word until I calm down. <laughs> usually, I pray for the individual. You know, depending on what mood it is. It, my prayers can change, you know. <laughs> but try to live in the kingdom of God. Set your focus on the things of the kingdom of God. And when you're stressed out, go to the word of God. I mean, I've been saved a long time. The scriptures come to me. The Holy Spirit always brings these scriptures to my mind, the ones that I need for that particular moment. That's why reading the word of God, you don't even really have to try to memorize it. If you just keep reading it over and over, you're going to find out after years, these scriptures, the Holy Spirit will bring it to remembrance because the Bible is the only book where the author is always present when you're reading it. So he can explain it to you all the time. And this is the beautiful thing in the last scripture. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, and never forget that. To be redeemed means you're bought back. And why did we have to get bought back? Because the devil owned your soul. The Bible even says that. When he took Jesus on the high mountain, he said, listen, Jesus, in his, in his hour of temptation, he said, all of these kingdoms, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. By the way, you can't see the highest mountain in, in um, Israel. You wouldn't see all the kingdoms of the world. He took them in the spirit. 
He said, all of this has been handed over to me. It was handed over because of the sin of Adam and Eve. And God threw them out of the garden and the whole earth became dominated by sin under the power of the devil. The Apostle John said the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. So therefore, he's the one doing all the evil. He just uses humans to do it. I want nothing to do with the devil no more. So I've been redeemed. I've been bought back and translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the sun if I'm walking in the spirit. See, we have a dual life down here. I can walk in humanness. I can give in to human impulses. I can give in to human sexual impulses, human desires. I can give in to human aggressions. Okay, because believe me, humans are mammals. And mammals do fight with each other. Okay, especially after the women. Okay, that's what they do. Okay, it's just the herd instinct. Okay, women in the animal kingdom are more docile. Okay, not human women all the time. But in the animal kingdom, they are usually more docile. I don't call it docile. I call it smarter. Men are stupid. We get into dumb fights. We're the ones who cause all the wars. Because we want. And we don't have. So the, James said we lust. And we don't have, so we commit murder. Okay? And we put everybody else's sons in the battle to fight. And meanwhile, we just go back to our mansions. And, and we, we, we're going to just waste human lives trying to get property or money. Now, I believe that you can defend yourself. Okay? I really believe in that. But the point is, being involved in wars just to gain more money and oil and this, that, and the other thing, we should think twice about you. that kind of stuff like that. You know? But anyhow... So this is Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. Next time we're going to pick it up and we're going to study and so see some great, great points in the book of Colossians. So if you want to, if you want to follow on with the Bible study, read the book of Colossians. Not many chapters at all. So therefore you can get through. But Paul had some great wisdom uh, to them. Uh, before we close in prayer, Joanne, can you come up here? Good. Joanne's going to come up here, and uh, I want everybody to have a seat. You saw her back there already, but she is a, uh, I was going to say a walking mirror, because she's not walking yet, but she will be. The doctor said that she'd probably be a paraplegic the rest of her life, but she can move now her arms, and both legs can move. One can move better than the other. Turn around. That's really neat. I mean, I like to have one of those, but not because of, being like needing it. But that's really good. How fast does it go? I don't know. I haven't tried it. Oh, you haven't gotten it up there yet, huh? It's gone. Hallelujah. Would you stretch forth your hands right now? Well, let me let me just give the microphone to Drew Ann so she could just share with you don't want to share anything? Can you say hello? Drew, say hello. Okay. Okay. Hi everybody, it's been four months since I've been here. It feels great to be back. Amen. 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 Stretch forth your hands. And then we're also going to uh, pray for Eric, okay, who's um, right now he's on life support, but he has some activity. So we want to believe that God's going to heal those brain cells. Father, we do thank you for Drew Ann. She's been a blessing, Lord, with Lance so many years and decades in our church fellowship, Father God. She's longed to get back here so much, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the restoration, Lord God, of all of her nerves. And, Lord, we speak healing in her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We thank you, Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that she will be up and walking, Lord God, full recovery in the name of Jesus Christ to every limb, Lord God. And we bless her right now with your strength and your grace in Jesus' precious name. And now, Lord God, we lift up Eric to you, and we're praying and believing, Father God, that you, Lord, will lay your hands upon him. The brain cells, Lord, that were killed off with a lack of oxygen. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we speak life into these cells, and we ask Jesus that you would touch them right now. Every cell, Lord God, may there be activity more and more every day. Bless his family. Give them the strength, Lord, and the fortitude and the Holy Ghost to be able to do these things in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen. amen. Quickly, anyone else here have a prayer request? Just raise your hand. God knows what it would be. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Just raise it up and you speak it to the Lord and I'm going to just say a general prayer. Praise God. Anybody else? Hallelujah. You just speak it to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are spirit, soul, and body, Lord God. And all of the individuals that raise their hands, either for themselves or somebody else, they need prayer in their spirit, 
their soul or their bodies, Father. So we're asking, oh God, do miracles in the name of Jesus Christ and we'll give you the glory, Lord. We send forth your word to heal every single person that either raised their hand for being here or raised their hand in proxy for someone that's not here. We say, be thou made whole in the name of Jesus Christ, thanking you, Lord God, because we believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit for healings and miracles, Lord God, as you told us to do, to pray and believe in our heart that we've already received and it would be granted unto us. So we're asking, grant miracles, Lord, of salvation, miracles of healing in mind and body. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray these things and the saints of God say, amen.